They had been driving through a heavily wooded area and encounters with wildlife were not unusual, but he had never been in a situation like this. Looking around at his friends' faces, he tried to see if any of them knew what to do. He suspected that the rest of his friends had never been in a situation like this either. That being said, they all knew that they couldn't just leave it be. They knew they had to act and they had to do it now. When they set out that day, Steve Noob never thought he'd find himself in such a situation, despite having lived in a rural community for a long time. Neither he nor his friends had any idea of what they were about to face. The road they were driving on rarely had any traffic, as a border the woods, they were chatting and having a good time. Then suddenly Steve slammed on the brakes. Steve's friends, bewildered by the sudden halt, scolded him for such a jarring action. And then they saw it. Their first thought was that it was an animal that had been hit by a car. There was a small brown lump in the middle of the road. Not seeing any other evidence of an accident and seeing that there were no other cars around, they got out to investigate. And that's when things only got stranger. They realized what the animal was as they slowly walked closer. It was a baby deer. Steve was saddened at the thought of the helpless creature that got hit by a car. The fawn's eyes were open something wasn't right. Its legs were in a strange position around its body collapsed, like it had tried to make self look smaller. Then one of the guys voiced a theory. Steve's friend thought that perhaps by a crouching like that, the fawn was trying to camouflage itself and hide. Judging by the creature's size, another real possibility was pointed out by someone else. It had probably been born just minutes before. Then they saw it breath and reached the conclusion that the fawn was unharmed and healthy. But either way they knew that they couldn't just go on their merry way and leave it there. One of the guys said, I think we should leave it alone, but Steve afraid that another driver might not see it and run it over had an idea. I'll just go up there and park my truck sideways and wait until it gets up. It should get up soon, he explained. While they were wondering how long they would have to guard the fawn against the dangerous road, they heard a wrestling sound coming from behind. Turning towards the woods, the men saw that there appearing at them from behind the foliage was an adult deer. Realizing that it must be the fawn's mother, Steve felt relief knowing the deer had a chance for survival now, that at least he knew it hadn't been abandoned. Knowing that they had to figure out a way of getting it out of the road, one of the guys made a decision. Paul and Steve agree that they should get it out of the road but the other guys were still unsure, realizing that they didn't have any better ideas. They decided on Paul's decision. He started walking very slowly to the baby deer. Meanwhile, Steve captured it all on camera. Paul said worrying about frightening the fawn. It's not going to hurt me. I'm not worried about that. Paul carefully moved his hands closer and closer while he bent down behind the fawn, testing its reaction to his presence. Realizing that it didn't seem too spooked, he gently placed his hands under its hind legs. After he had slowly scooped it up, he stood up quickly and started walking across the road toward the woods. Then the fonts started to wriggle. The fonts started trying to get out of Paul's hands. It's moving its legs just as he had stepped out of the road and onto the grassy shoulder. One of the guys said, don't drop it. Luckily, Paul had a strong grip that enabled him to lower the fawn closer to the ground, and then he let go. Suddenly, the baby deer leaped into the woods and away to where his mother was waiting. The guy stood in amazement. Paul turned to look at his friends with an ecstatic look on his face. I saw the fawn leaping towards its mother. Yeah, he shouted with his arms in the air. The other men were also delighted that the mission was accomplished. One of them explained to that it was awesome. Steve, knowing what a remarkable moment it had been decided to post it video online, but reactions differed. Some people were critical and noted that the fawn's mother was right there, and the fawn would probably have made its way back to her if the guys had left it alone. However, most people praised Paul's actions for helping save the baby deer. Steve's video of the incident has since been viewed over 5 million times, but is the negative commentary warranted? As a person, it is normal to worry that a baby by itself may be in trouble.
But according to the Virginia Beach Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, female deer do tend to leave their fawns on their own while it's light out, and they always come back. Most of the time, it is best to leave them alone, because handling them could lead to dire consequences. The lingering human scent on a fawn could cause their mothers to reject them. So wildlife experts generally advise against touching baby deer. The Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife recommends that, if you must handle them, you rub an old towel in the grass and wipe the fawn to remove human scent afterward. Paul had no time to clean the fawn off before it ran, but this doesn't mean that what he did was wrong. If the fawn is found in a dangerous place, it may be picked up and immediately moved several feet away from the danger. The Virginia Beach Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals says on their website, they would definitely have approved of what Paul had done that day. And we agree too. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with your friends and family. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next.